we're at the tower of London. <laughs> it's not the only thing we have planned today, but I just, I wanted to be able to spend as much time here as I wanted. I didn't want to have a time crunch. So we have this, and then we have the Parliament tour later this afternoon. And then? And then we're going to see Mousetrap, which I'm also very excited for. And this used to be a big moat. So this grassy area right here, there was two moats around the Tower of London. And this moat that has the grassy area around it, they use the tidal flush. They use the tidal flush to get rid of the sewer. Yes, but eventually, and it just, it filled in naturally and it became the most fertilized grassy area in all of London. <laughs> the beef eaters, they used to be the guardsmen of the tower. They still live here. Like their families and stuff still reside in the tower and they are tour guides and stuff. Wouldn't it be funny if one of them's a vegetarian? <laughs> yes. I'm not a beef eater. I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> this looks very low and squat because the surrounding I can't come around it. Yeah, surrounding area has built up. But back in the day, if you came down here this would feel much more tower like. If this is where you were entering. And this is the door you you entered in. This is it. There is an audio guide here. We skipped it this time, and uh, I feel like there's enough content without it that I would recommend uh, finding a free one online, and then you get to use your own device and your own headphones. But I can't say how good this one is or isn't because I didn't try it. From the outside, this doesn't look like as much, but in here, this feels more extensive. There's castles within castles. I gotta admit, this feels like a Disney ride. <laughs> a little bit. You got the aluminum things out front. You got the guys in costume. Good job, cast members. And then you've got that clock. It's a small world after all. This is the queue to get into the crown jewels. Rick Steves, <laughs> he said, get here early and go straight back to the crown jewels because everybody else gets stopped up front. We just got out of seeing the crown jewels. We did. And. Uh, they don't allow any pictures or video in there. Nope. So we can't show them to you. And but there's what is... the beef eaters standing around yelling at you if you try. Them. They're gorgeous and they're beautiful, but it's just like all this ceremony and pomp and circumstance and for show. It's for fun. It's for fun. Fake things that are just as shiny, yes. that look the same. Yep. And since there's no actual function, I don't know why jewels are worth anything. So, and Rick Steves was right. You come back and we just walked through. We were able to backtrack a little bit. Yeah, we didn't wait in line at all. Come here early and then go straight to the back. Also works at Disneyland. <laughs> yes, it does. And this is the White Tower. I imagined it to be taller, given there's so many Aes Sedai that live there. <laughs> Maybe the book was wrong. It's the only White Tower I know about. I don't know anything about this one yet. So this is a museum in the 17th and 18th century. Mm -hmm. It's been a museum for a long time. It was there to impress the people. Yeah, horses are strong. Something about this armor just feels more aggressive. You gotta display the crown jewels, the family jewels. <laughs> but it's like if someone was coming at you with a sword and a spear and a lance, what armor would you choose? What worked best? Metal. <laughs> what design? <laughs> Metal. <laughs> it's like somebody tried to print the Wheel of Time all at once. Those are some serious sharp blades. Oh, wow. <laughs> Which one would Kaladin choose? That's what I want to know. The White Tower was just full of so much cool armor. Uh, it took us forever to go through it all, but it was awesome. This is made entirely from old weapons. So you've got pistols for claws, like spyglasses for the arm, swords, there's a cannon for that wing. Rifles for the green joint. Dragon. This was an actual headsman's block and axe. A little gruesome. This is your final upgrade in Age of Empires. After you get artillery. And from 
inside the tower, you get a great view of Tower Bridge. There's another tower. And then this is the bloody tower. No foul language intended. This is where Sir Walter Raleigh was imprisoned. There's always another wall. Yep. Oh, there's, there's the... We walked through this portcullis over here. So there's the river gate. The river used to be here. The river receded. And now it's receded even more. Torture. I don't believe in torture. <laughs> oh, got the rack. Yeah. This is way complicated compared to that. Here, they just made you get on your knees and they squished you. Scolded you in thirds. This, they turned me out. About 45 minutes, I'm going to be your guide. Together, we're going to tour the tower. I'm going to point out some of the historical buildings. I'm going to tell you a little bit more of the history, okay? Yeah. Yeah. I'm also going to tell you about murder. People yeah. have their heads chopped off. A bit of blood and a bit of gore. You up for it? Yeah. 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 Well, you've all been warned. <laughs> so the story of the tower begins way back in the year 1066 with William, the Duke of Normandy. He was better known as William the Conqueror. He defeated the Anglo-Saxon King Harold at the Battle of Hastings. William, he went on to become King William I of England on Christmas Day of that year. William, he looked for a site where he could build a press and overawe the citizens of London. He chose that site just inside the eastern city wall where once a Roman port had stood. And it was here in 1078 that he ordered the construction of his first royal palace and fortress to be built in England. We refer to it today as the White Tower. It's situated behind those up there. There's no point in looking because it's behind. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a much better view a bit later in the tour. Over the next 200 yes, years, successive monarchs they continue to add to the defences of the tower. The inner wall that's got 13 smaller towers, and that was completed around 1220. The outer wall, completed in 1280, has got a further six towers all to the south to defend against an attack coming up the River Thames. Big gates. There's murder holes. In case someone needs to get murdered. So we're located eight. He was a man named Jack Ketch. Now Jack Ketch was a part-time butcher, part-time executioner, but a full-time alcoholic. <laughs> he turned up on that fatal day as drunk as a lord, bringing with him the wrong axe. It took eight strikes of the axe to try and sever the head from the body. Even then, he had to get out his butcher's carving knife to cut through the bone and the muscle and the gristle. Once the head was removed, both body and head were placed into the handcart, both brought back in here to the tower, where the head was quickly sewn back on, so an archer's could produce a portrait before being buried in the beautiful chapel of St. Peter and Vincula some 24 hours later. Oh my gosh. Some of your places now is a picture, right? <laughs> right, let's be heading around the corner. <laughs> chop, chop. We're there, that used to be the main entrance into the Tower of London when the River Thames washed against the base of the Inner Ballium Wall. On the left hand side of that archway, there's a ring attached to the wall. That's just a reminder of how boats would have tied up alongside to offload stores, cargo, personnel, and such. Before you all stands William's Norman Keep, better known as the White Tower. Construction began in 1078 and it took 20 years to complete under the directions of Gandalf de Beck, who was the Bishop of Rochester. Not to be confused with Gandalf de Bearded Wizard of Lord of the Rings, totally different bloke. The White Tower stands just over 90 feet tall. The walls are 15 foot thick at the base, taping to 11 foot thick at the top. Soldiers that were based here at the tower. This is now the home of the new Jewel House. I'm going to say that one more time just to make sure everybody heard me. <laughs> this is now the home of the new Jewel House. Can you all see that big golden clock? Yeah. Yep. Can you all see that big golden clock? Yes. yes. Right. Below that big golden clock, there are two big large doors. After the death of her cousin Edward, she was declared queen by this ambitious family and they placed her in the White Tower, where she ruled for just only nine days. 
the rightful heir to the throne, Queen Mary Tudor, she retook the crown by force of arms. Lady Jane Grey and her young husband, Guildford Dudley, he was only 19, were both sent to trial at London Guildhall. They both returned to the tower, both under sentence of death. Lady Jane Grey was placed in number five at Tower Green in Jennifer Jaylis' house, just over there to my right. From a window in that house over there, she was forced to watch her husband be dragged out the beaching tower, up onto Tower Hill, where he was publicly executed by means of block and axe. She was then forced to watch his headless corpse be dragged back into the tower and quickly buried in an unmarked grave in the chapel royal to my left. If this was not anguish enough, for a young, innocent, 16-year-old girl, she also had to witness the carpenters erecting the scaffold right outside her window for her own execution <laughs> later on that day, the 12th of February, 1554, a truly tragic, dark, dark day in our <laughs> English history. Now, those are more poor, unfortunate than the way they went to the beautiful chapel of St. Peter in Vincula, which is Latin for St. Peter in Chains. He's actually written down to say why yeoman wars are all beefy. It's all it is, though. There's a number of yeoman working today. If you just ask each and every one of them, you get many different answers, I'm sure. Now, talking to beef eaters, would you like to know about us? Yes. Okay. <laughs> to become a yeoman warder, there's three simple things you need to do. You need to do a minimum of 22 years military service. You need to be the rank of a warrant officer or equivalent. You need to have this medal here. This is my long service and my good conduct medal. Once you've achieved those three things, you can then apply to become a yeoman warder here at the Tower of London. We currently have 35 yeoman warders working here at the Tower, four of which are women. We're taken from all arms of the services, Royal Navy, Royal Air Force, British Army. Me personally, I did 33 years in Her Majesty's Royal Navy before I came here to the Tower. Now, we date right the way back to the year 1485 at the Battle of Bosworth Field. That's when Henry VII defeated King Richard III at the Battle of Bosworth Field. Henry then came here with his army, but he had to continue to fight because not everybody wanted Henry to be the king. So when Henry took his army away to fight, he left behind a body of men to guard the Tower of London and protect the crown jewels. And we've been doing that job since the year 1485. We started to get numbered in the year 1826 by the then Council of the Tower, the Duke of Wellington. I'm Yeoman Water 408. The newest one is 420. That makes him the 420th Yeoman Water since the year 1826. There has literally been more men and women in space than there has been Yeoman Waters here at the Tower of London. We do choose to enter into the Yeoman. The first one was over there on Tower Green, in front of the King's House. That's where I stand in front of the table. The Yeoman stand behind me. The constable comes out, he reads the words, I repeated his words back to him, I then got sworn in as a yeoman warder here at the Tower of London. They gave me a nice tie and they gave me a blazer badge. I get to wear this uniform you see me in today. This is our blue day-to-day -day working uniform. The Beef Eater tour was the highlight of the Tower of London for us, but afterwards we went and walked around the outer walls and there's museums that line all of the outer walls of the Tower of London. is where we're going on Friday, the Shard. Like yeah. Sound of Music style. No. <laughs> the outer wall that surrounds the Tower of London is where the current bee feeders, yeoman warders, live. And it was fun to see their decorations and stuff that they had out to celebrate the coronation. And then as you walk around, they have other exhibits that show the current beef eaters and what they did and how they got to where they were at. Our tour guide is famous. What would you like about this place, Tower of London? The Tower of London. It is a must-see. I was saying earlier that it's a bucket list item for me to be here and to like put together all the different pieces of history and English history that I've read about and know that they like happened here and where they happened here. I just, I love that about visiting places like this. And you get a really large cross-section of English history being here from 
the 1200s or earlier all the way up it's like 700 years that you're getting a piece of what happened so it's very cool very well done yeah you learn about the fire at the same time world war one and two mm-hmm. and medieval kings and all the stuff yep in I would one say site the crown jewels is probably one of at the bottom of the list of things that you see here for me but go do those first. But go do those first because otherwise you get that line. There's a long line over there. Really, We just walked right in, no problem, and there was nobody in there. Beef Eater Tour is a must. He was hilarious. And learning about the, the them and what they do here is really cool. The it's yeoman. Just, yeah, the yeoman. yeoman. You feel like you step back in time coming in here. And you could spend... You could, almost all day. Almost all day. There's a few things we haven't even gone and seen yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah. So. We haven't seen the mint, and we didn't go and do that museum that's yep. right over there. We just, we don't have time. We've got to go. But we've been days. here for four hours, almost five hours. And going going solidly the yes, whole time. Yes, and we're still not done. Off we go. We decided to upgrade our room. Haha, uh-huh, that's a lie. Never mind. That's a lie. <laughs> no. We're still in our shoebox of a room. You're just leaning on another dirty telephone thing. They're gross. They are. Completely, if you can compare New York to London, London wins. Why? Because any pub in London that has a stage, or any little hall that has a stage, will get itself classified as a theatre. Oh, Why? Because funny. more money! You can make more money if you're a multi-purpose venue. So there you go. Now, I am an actor myself, ladies and gentlemen. That's one of my main jobs, actor and writer. I can recommend any show in London that you want to go see. I can tell you what's good, I can tell you what's bad, I can tell you how to get cheap tickets, I can tell you how to avoid scams. Just come up and ask me at some point on the journey. Now let's talk about another thing about um, British people and tourism. The changing of the guard ceremony. With the coronation, obviously the change of the guard has been put on pause for a bit. Your next one, I believe, is on Wednesday. This is where you need to come. Don't go down to the front because you won't see anything. Here, you'll be able to see the royal horses coming out of the palace and the royal relief battalion coming out of the royal barracks. And they'll cross in the centre there. There's a golden lady up there. There's a party happening at Buckingham Palace. And we didn't get invited. We didn't get invited, but we've seen all the people dressed in Maybe they fancy just didn't outfits. know we were here. Yes. Maybe that's it. Yes. Now in 2027, he has a choice. He can stay there or he can move to another royal estate. My money is, if he's going to move, he's going to head to Balmoral. Now, Balmoral is in the Scottish Highlands. It's got huge links to the royal family. Before we carry on, I think they're changing over the guards, so I'll let you guys watch this. This changing of the guard was similar to the others that we watched in that it was a bunch of formal stamping around and greeting each other and whatnot, but uh, it was cool to see. It's quintessentially British. Now, it was created in 1534 by King Henry VIII, one of the most famous monarchs, and it was his home. Now, Henry VIII is associated with Hampton Court. Hampton Court, the clue is in the title, court. That was his place of business where he held court. This was where he lived when he wasn't at court. Okay, guys, this is called the Elizabeth Memorial. Yeah, she actually commented on it. You know what's good about living longer? You can live without your husband, apparently. That's how big was that. The secret to a long life was getting rid of her husband. It cost 30 million to build. Now you're probably wondering, who is that up there? Who, what did he do to get up there? What wars did he fight? What did he give to charity? Short answer, this man did absolutely nothing. That's our old friend, Sir Frederick, the grand old Duke of York. On his deathbed in 1829, he turned around to a friend and said, how will I be remembered? And the friend went, well, you won't be remembered because you've done nothing. So as a result, he spent most of his family's fortune on constructing this statue here. And part of his leg was blown off by Hannibal. He was carried below deck and the ship surgeon went, you're gone, there's nothing I can do for you. Nelson, clinging on to life, called for his second in command. The tours are worth it. You've got to do the tour, though, uh, early in your trip because you get lots of tips and a little bit of background. This saves you time later on. 
So like we came to Trafalgar Square uh, on our first day here. We saw a lot of stuff, but without the background, one, we didn't know everything we were seeing, and two, we came back anyway on the tour. So now we're like walking the same distance twice. Probably would have been better just to do the tour first to have a tour guide. Also, they're usually entertaining. Uh, Nick, our tour guide, has given us some good tips. Everything these days is about the contactless payment. I've used my watch to scan on and off of uh, subways. And there is a reader on the bathroom entrance in Europe. You pay for public restrooms. And I could just scan my watch and go in. Uh, that is one thing that I would love to have, love to see happen in the U.S. I have enjoyed the tour immensely. Saw things that I would not have seen. The tour guide is animated and he has lots of good information and funny little tidbits. And just like the beef eaters at Tower, you just get somebody that's engaging and it makes the whole thing that much better. I signed up for this tour and I didn't realize that it was like a five hour tour. It was the palaces and parliament tour and we're getting the palaces and I think we're, we're gonna not get parliament, the parliament tour because we're going, we have to go to the play. How do your feet feel? They're tired, my feet are tired. My feet are also tired. Okay, probably time to head on. Yep. Now when Scotland Yard first opened its doors, there were Scotland only three departments. The first one was the constables, the uniformed officers that would walk a 15-minute radius for the feet. Then you had the superintendents. They're in charge of all the paperwork. And finally, you had the detective who were actually in charge of investigating crimes. Now, in 1888, Scotland Yard came after fire from both the government and the British people. And that spoke of a person called Jack the Ripper. <laughs> A great building where the Prime Minister lives, 10 Downing Street. And also you'll see one US president. If you look behind this statue here, Hello, you will see Abraham Lincoln. Let's talk about the House of Parliament. Now, originally this was the Royal Palace. We had a king called King Canute the Viking back in the early 900 AD. And he was in charge of England. He was also king of Normandy, Switzerland and Norway. He wanted a palace where all of his foreign aides could meet at the same time. A palace that was accessible via the river. So that is why he constructed this palace here. Now fast forwarding to 1800s, slowly the royal family started losing power and parliament started gaining power. So it became a seat of parliament instead. There we go. Here we are at the Mousetrap Theater. This was an impulse purchase. Impulse purchase, so excited. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. We are sitting in the very last row just about. Yep. And that's okay. We've already seen the show. We're here for the experience. Yep. I really We're just wanna see if it's the actual theater from the movie. And we stopped and got gelato. So, and now Heather's cold. I'm freezing. Here. We just got out of the mousetrap. It was so good. It was awesome. It was so good. Very professional yes. actors. Very well done. Yep. The seats the, were painful. The actors were so good. Yeah. We didn't get the cheap seats. They were a little painful. We both struggled. I struggled. <laughs> My seat like pitched forward. Yeah. I felt like I was going to fall down the whole time. We survived and the show was awesome. Yep. So the time flew by. Like it seemed Oh, it so went short. so fast. It because, went so fast. Yeah. It was just so good. Yep. And they have an Agatha Christie monument. So this is a monument just down the street from the mousetrap that has Agatha Christie's name and likeness. Here. 